muted. Okay, so here are our uh, methods. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so here are our methods. So we have uh, two strings. Okay, one represents the directory path. So files is our directory, and file test.java is this file itself. Okay, file test.java. Okay, so we have created a file object with directory path and file name okay you can include this whole path along with this file name that is files test dot java and pass one argument to the file object itself okay here notice we have used forward slashes as uh, file separators uh, file separators this is uh, similar to as uh, similar to Unix uh, way of uh, representing uh, the files path, okay, file path. So if you want to uh, write this thing for Windows, even if you write like this, uh, I mean, this is the right way of doing it. I, even if you, wa if you want to kind of like write it in uh, Windows format, you have to use this uh, backward slash, okay, but you have to use two slashes, two backward slashes. Okay, two backward slashes. Otherwise, it is single forward slash. Okay, and uh, here we have created the file path, a file object, and uh, we are trying to uh, execute uh, methods on those things, or we are trying to kind of like find out uh, the attributes of particular file or properties of that particular file. Okay, that is get file name. This will return the name of the file. That is this uh, file test.java, and uh, File dot exists. It returns true if the file if file dot uh, file files test dot Java exists. Okay. Otherwise, this will return false. Okay. And the get path it will give the whole path whatever you have specified. Okay. And the get absolute path the entire path it will give starting from your root directory. C is as a root directory for Windows and forward slash is a root directory for uh, uh, Unix. Okay, so what is the difference between get path and uh, get absolute path? This will give if you specify a uh, relative path, this will give the or this will only give the relative path. Okay, but this will give from the root it will give the absolute path. Absolute path. Okay, so each file it will uh, check whether a particular file is a simple file like our text file, Java files, and all. So it will return true if it is a simple file, otherwise it will return false. Okay, use directory. It will check the file, file object, and see if it is a directory. It will return true. Otherwise, it will not return. Uh, it will return false. Okay. Can read. You can read. Can write. True means uh, you can write. Uh, can executable. Can execute. Okay. So. Uh, it will uh, say whether that uh, whether the file that is being pointed by file object or that is represented by file object is a it, uh, is uh, executable. Okay, if you specify dot exe file, if you specify a dot exe file, it, this will give uh, true. Okay, this will give true. So I have created another object here, file object where I have uh, mentioned uh, the entire path. Okay, in one single string. Not I have not specified the directory and then. Uh, Let's check the file name here. This is the entire path, okay? So we will use one method. That is, uh, that's why I deleted the beginning. At the beginning, I deleted that uh, particular file. I had executed, and this particular file was there. So I deleted it, okay? So we can use create new file on new file, okay? This will return create new file. Will return uh, a boolean. 
So you can specify, I mean, if you want, once, uh, if it creates, it will return true. If it, uh, if the file already exists, it will return false, okay? Or if it, by, for any reason, if it is not able to create uh, the particular file, uh, that will be, uh, it will return false, okay? The same thing, we can print it here. And also, Uh, they have created two file objects with the file object itself. This is also file object. This is a string. Okay. So here we have created those two things. This is new file. Yeah. Here is that directory part is here and file name is here. Okay. And then we are trying to use other methods. We will first check whether the file exists or not. If it exists, we will check whether it is a directory or not. If it is a directory, we will try to list down all the files in that particular directory. Okay? So we will see, uh, we will try to print out the name of the file and the directory path, or the parent. Okay? The entire path it will give. So let us see, let us execute this program and see what output we will get. Okay? Okay. So here we see that the file name, this is what uh, it is printing here. This is what it is printing, all these things. So the file exists, path, absolute path, normal file, directory, readable, writable, executable. So all those things. See, it's a normal file. Yes, it is normal file. Absolute path, it gave the entire path, okay? Uh, path also, it gave uh, absolute path because we have specified the entire path there, okay? Uh, what is the file name? file name, uh, files test.java. Does the file exist? Yes, it exists. So normal file, yes, it is a normal file. Directory, it is not a directory because it's a normal file. Is it readable? Yes. Is it writable? Yes. Is it executable? Yes, Java file, it is executable. And uh, new file created, true. That is what we created here. That is test.txt file. Okay, new file created, yes, true, it is created. Uh, this is where we are printing it. And then, uh, so we, we we are reading a directory. So this is our directory. Okay, files is our directory. This directory path object is pointing to this particular directory or it represents the particular directory. So we are checking whether the directory exists or not. If it exists, we'll check whether the it is a directory or not. And then we are trying to print the uh, files within that particular directory. Okay, all these things. Uh, so this is the first uh, file, Java file. And the directory path it gives so normally it gives okay so this is file test.java there is one more file uh, uh, java file that is includes file and then there is a test.txt file which we created here okay if we try to run this program again so here this will give new file created gives false because already that file exists okay if you go and see this directory say for example you have all the four this is our directory Okay, the full path of this our directory. Okay, so if you delete this and try to run it, okay, here it uh, says true. If you go back and see, it has created this particular file. Okay, so that is the functionality of your uh, file object. Also, uh, so while uh, listing out the files in a directory, right? Say for example, you have uh, uh, you have written an application and uh, for maybe in a particular directory and you have both dot uh, class files and dot uh, java files in same directory or same package okay but uh, while creating a jar file dot jar file you want to take only dot class files dot class files not dot java uh, java files that is what is called as your uh, packaging uh, okay so only if you if you want to package only dot java dot class files as jar file uh, you can uh, do that while listing the files using list files or list method just now we saw how to list it right one by one it returns either uh, uh, string array or uh, file uh, objects array okay so you can create uh, uh, or you can get a list which contains only dot class files or dot java files for that matter for any for any of your requirements okay dot java files 
uh, by using what are known as file name filter. Okay, file name filter is an interface. It defines only one method that is accept. Okay, it defines only one method that is accept. For the files to be included, it returns true. The logic is for the files to be included, it returns true. And for the files to be excluded, it returns false. Okay, you can use this file name filter with list as well as list files. Okay, with list and list files. Uh, I haven't mentioned the. Uh, okay, so the you know, signature will be like this: list file name filter, uh, file name filter object. Okay, and then list files, file name filter, file name filter object. So if uh, this particular method will be executed once, and it lists out all the, uh, it will return all the uh, like uh, files which you want after filtering. Okay, after filtering, it will return all the files that will be listed by this list method. Okay, you are passing that uh, file name filter. It is it acts as a filter. Okay, uh, normally like for example, if you want, as I mentioned, only dot class files or dot java files or dot txt files, you can do that. So how to do that? Since this is an interface, you have to implement that interface and uh, implement that interface and uh, implement this method. Okay, so how to do that? Let us say an example. So here we have include files. Okay, this is a uh, class which implements file name filter interface. Okay, uh, note that every time when we are using this package, okay, every time when we are using this package, respective classes or interfaces are imported explicitly. We have to do this. We have to manually import the classes and interfaces. Okay, so this is what we have done. We are we are using file and file name filter uh, from a Java I/O package. So that is why uh, we have imported these two things. Or you can mention like Java dot I/O dot star. Okay, which which includes all the classes and interfaces that are available within this Java dot I/O. So for obvious reasons, we will include. A, Individual files and interface, individual classes and inter interfaces. Okay, so we have defined a particular uh, string here, and while creating an object, we specify what needs to be included. Okay, what needs to be included. So then uh, we will pass the directory and then the uh, name uh, string uh, files uh, file names. Okay, this will return. Uh, this is our logic. Whichever the uh, uh, say for a particular name, the file. Uh, which ends with whatever you specify here. Okay, those files will be will be included. Those files will be included while we list uh, the directory files. Okay, so for example, if you want to include only .dot java files, if you want to include only .dot java files while creating the object, you can mention like include files. dot java okay in this case what happens here uh, it takes a directory and then uh, the file name okay within the directory whatever the directory that you have specified within the directory it will check for all the dot java files it will check for all the dot java files uh, by using this particular uh, method this is a uh, this is your uh, string method right you have ends with uh, Starts with okay. A couple of weeks back, uh, we saw all these methods, right? Instead, starts with all those things, okay? So, uh, if it ends with dot Java, if you specify dot Java, it ends with what it returns uh, those names of those files, which ends with dot Java file, okay? Ends with returns true for dot Java files, whatever you have specified here, okay? 
So for that is why all the dot .java files will be listed when you try to uh, list the files. Let us see uh, this test class. So what have we done here? Dot .java class. We are pa passing dot .java here as we just discussed. Okay. And then uh, we have mentioned the uh, directory that is uh, in, the, in uh, session 38 files. Okay. And we have created one uh, string array uh, which is pointing to none. So another directory, same pointing to another file which is pointing to the same directory. Another uh, string array, we will see how, why we will use that. Okay. So directory. This is our directory. We will check whether it exists, if it is a directory or not. So we will get the uh, we will get uh, we will pass this in file, which is our uh, filter here. Okay, which is our filter here. And uh, this will this file list will only list Java files. Okay, this is our list, which lists out all the files that are there in this in, the, in this particular directory. Okay, not only Java files. Okay, not only Java files. Let us run this program because uh, here we will print only Java files because we have passed this particular uh, filter here. Okay. So there is everything. Then run this program and see. Okay. So first time uh, we have passed this filter. That is why it is listing. Uh, give me a second. Okay, I got disconnected. Uh, hope all of you can hear me. Is it audible? Uh, is it audible? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Rita. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. So, uh, first one uh, for the first file list, right? Here we are passing the filter. That is why uh, we are able to see only Java files because we have passed only dot Java. So here it uh, lists out all the files, including .txt. For example, if you want to put only .txt file, .txt, okay, sorry, .txt, and when you run it, it will list out only the .txt file. That is this one file list, okay, and then this will list all the files, okay. So that is how this uh, file name filter will work. You have to implement file name filter interface and uh, uh, in your class and then implement the method, accept method. Okay, as you know, accept method will return true for uh, files to be included and the false for fly files to be excluded. Okay, okay. So let's move on to the actual stream. 
okay let's move on to the actual stream here that is uh, the basic introduction of uh, the file so let's move on to okay so creating directories and all if you want to try so you can specify one particular path okay for example okay here itself you can specify file i will use make directories okay so that uh, that is a part of uh, your uh, make di directory okay so for say for example and to create okay say for example here i don't have any directories okay file i have only three java files and one test dot uh, txt file so if i want to create multiple directories okay new file and of this that is our file okay that is our file directory what we can do is file uh, create new directory okay let us mention some directories okay directory 1 directory 2 directory 3 okay so when we call dot mkdir okay mkdir notice that we don't have any directories here okay uh, and we have specified three directories here directory 1 directory 2 and directory 3 so it should be like under files you should have directory 1 under directory 1 you should have directory 2 under directory 2 you should have directory 3 okay that is what this make dir uh, do uh, let us run this okay so it completed and let's see whether it created see it created directory 1 directory 2 and directory 3 okay okay so where do you actually use this uh, thing okay i'll tell you an uh, example a uh, real life example okay uh, so uh, there is an application okay that application what it does is like uh, for that application uh, the db the objects right the db objects are uh, like the the objects application objects needs to be created for the db tables and uh, for the database itself the entire database we have to create a uh, uh, objects we have to create the uh, consider it as a java object or a c++ object c++ object or java objects okay so what has uh, been done is in that one what has been done is you have uh, created the data model and you have uh, some uh, this uh, uh, kind of like uh, you have some uh, some files json files okay you have some json files okay so this actually represents the database architecture okay this json file actually represents database architecture so assume that you you are required to write a program okay you are required to write a program uh, to read this json file okay json file and correspondingly create java objects java objects okay create java objects not only creating java objects you have to create objects in respective folders respective folders okay for example you have a particular uh, table table uh, t and you have uh, this table will have a number of columns okay you have to create an object for this particular table t okay you have to create class We with all these parameters, say column one, column two, column three, column four, column five. Okay, you have to create private string t one, private int t two. Okay, all these things. So not only creating this particular class. Okay, you have to create directories 
and under the directory subdirectory supertal it is needed and then create these classes reading this uh, uh, JSON uh, file which represents the database model. Okay. In such scenarios what you can do is you can use your file and uh, do it and for writing the uh, classes itself we can use input and output stream okay, whichever you want. Uh, since this is character based we can use character based stream. If you want to write it in uh, bytes also you can do that way also that is not, a, not an issue. Okay. So that is one of the real life examples that you can think of okay, for using these files and other uh, streams. So let us go to the next topic. So that is what we have created the directories. Uh, make BIR will create just a, say for example you want to create one single directory okay under file. Okay. So you give all the path till whatever the directory you want to create a new directory. Okay. So under files you want to create new directory that you can specify here. But in this case it creates parents along with the specified directory. If the, the, the parent directory does not exist, it will create all the parent directories. This will work as this if you specify uh, or if you specify a path where the last one is uh, not existing okay, and all other parents exist. So same, but it will work like this only. Okay. Uh, yeah, please let me know if you have any questions till now with respect to files. So that is uh, very simple right, files is very simple. Let us move on to the stream classes. Okay. So the uh, entire uh, IO package is uh, uh, built on uh, the four, built on four abstract classes that is input stream and output stream, reader and writer. Okay. This input stream and output streams are for uh, handling. raw data that is your zeros, ones and all. Okay, this is your zeros, ones and all to handle raw data. For example, network data. So if you are reading the network data, you can uh, use this uh, input stream and output stream. Okay. For example, if you are reading a character, okay, for characters, you can use readers and writers. Okay. So there are advantages uh, while using this one. There are advantages. So uh, this is actually with this uh, input stream and output stream, we can do this also. Okay. These are uh, in a way wrappers around input stream and output stream for reading characters. That's it. Okay. The underlying uh, the classes that work for these readers and writers is input stream and output stream itself. Okay. With this input stream and output stream, we can read any kind of data. any kind of data, not only bytes, you can read any kind of data characters, integer, primitive data types, whatever it is, okay, what not, okay. So uh, based on these things, uh, the IO package is divided into two uh, categories. One is uh, at the base you have uh, object class and then that is into uh, your byte stream. Uh, input stream and uh, output stream. Uh, this one is character st character streams. You can uh, mention it as character streams that has uh, reader and writer. Yes, correct, Kavita. Character means uh, it is uh, strings only. Okay, characters is nothing but strings only. Sequence of uh, characters is uh, strings, right? So that is that is the meaning of that one. Okay. So let us uh, today we will try to discuss about uh, byte stream, and uh, we will uh, stop the session. Okay. So we will see uh, how to kind of like uh, write programs uh, for byte trading bytes. Okay. And then uh, we will see in tomorrow's session we will see character stream. Uh, it is like uh, almost all the packages, whatever the classes that you see for uh, byte stream, similar to uh, similar classes will be there in uh, reader and uh, for character streams as well. 
for example we have one particular uh, uh, all these things are uh, uh, abstract classes right uh, this is one of the uh, concrete class which is uh, the subclass of abstract class that is file input string okay this is another uh, concrete class which extends from input string okay it extends from input string okay uh, so for reader this is input string is for reading the uh, bytes okay reader is for reading character okay reading character so this corresponds input string corresponds to reader for character this is for bytes okay similar to byte input string we have file reader okay and for output string we have file output string and corresponding to this one so output string we have writer okay for character and uh, corresponding to this concrete class we have file writer okay like this not for all the classes but for most of the classes you have uh, complementary classes or uh, similar classes in character strings as well okay for input string or okay. vice versa okay so why do we use uh, input string as we discussed uh, at the beginning of this session input string is used for reading data from a source okay reading data from a source and there are a couple of uh, uh, interfaces like closable and flushable okay closable means uh, it uh, defines one particular method close okay so once everything is done after you read the, uh, everything from this particular source you have to close it excuse me you have to close this stream okay that is done using close method okay and the most of the methods throw io exception on error conditions io is our package so io exception io exception okay these are all built in exception so uh, say for example if you are trying to read a, read from a particular okay and that particular file does not exist you will get file not found exception okay so there are other exceptions also so when we start exploring more on this particular package we will see on those things okay so the input stream implements closable interface which uh, defines one closed method okay so closable as the name itself indicates uh, this uh, input strings are closable okay so this is the hierarchy for your byte input stream at the top you have your byte input stream okay this extends uh, java's object okay so note that this is an abstract class all these things are your concrete classes okay and uh, a file input stream uh, is extended by uh, buffered uh, input stream data input stream pushback input stream data input stream is very very important very important for what has anyone heard about uh, hadoop has anyone heard about hadoop so this data input stream is being used in hadoop extensively okay yeah here okay cool so this data input the data stream so that is data input and data output streams are being extensively used in uh, hadoop for uh, 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 mappers okay map uh, map and reduce a uh, model of uh, processing data okay Okay, Kavita has a question. Let me, yeah, yeah, Kavita, go ahead. 
Uh, I mean, I have a question like uh, input stream has these many types. So is that uh, they are used based upon the file size or uh, I mean? No, no, no. They are, they are not uh, dependent. Nothing is dependent on file size here. Okay. So uh, uh, say for example, uh, file input file stream. Okay, you can. Uh, uh, so why did this question come to your mind? There must be some reason, right? Just to understand yeah. how how you got uh, this question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, like uh, if it is a big file, and uh, uh, I mean sometimes these questions are connected to database, like based upon the performance. Like uh, I want to. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, I want to load the data into some, in a some file. I want to put it in a Excel file or in the CSV files. So, in that way, I was asking. Uh, for that matter, we are talking about streams, okay? Yeah, I mean, we use like to write and read and write the files there. So. Uh, is there anything specific we have to use uh, for uh, these types or we can just use, I mean, uh, file input stream because there are piped input stream, sequence. Uh, usually we use buffered input stream, but uh, I mean, I, I just wanted to know about these things. Okay. Yeah, here what, what are we doing here? This is byte array, right? So yeah. If, uh, whenever a situation arises, where you want to use the uh, byte arrays, right? Say, for example, you are uh, 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 you are trying to uh, you call some method, okay? Or you are trying to uh, you are uh, yeah you are calling a particular method that returns a uh, uh, byte array, okay? That returns a byte array, which you are supposed to read from that byte array and then write it to some uh, destination, maybe a file, or maybe some uh, some other. Or say, for example, you are, you are given a byte array. Uh, which contains the actual state of an object. Okay, say for example, you are using, uh, uh, say for example, you are using uh, uh, an application which uh, uses uh, which uses Hibernate. Okay, Hibernate framework, which is your ORM tool, ORM framework actually, and uh, this through this you read data from your uh, database, but you want to uh, store that data. After reading it, just for a hypothetical example, okay, after you have a particular object yes. to a particular record, okay. You get this particular object from a record after reading it uh, from uh, through your Hibernate framework, okay. And uh, there is a requirement where you have to store this at certain some place persistently on your hard disk or somewhere, wherever you want to store it, okay. So assume that this will uh, hmm. this you get it as a byte array, okay. In that case. You read it from byte array. You get it as byte array. That is what is the interface that is given to you. You have to use the byte array only. There is no other option. Okay. In such cases, you can use this byte array input stream. Okay. Okay. And uh, for file input stream, anyway, you can use it for anything. Okay. But uh, that's what the input stream. You can use it for any any form of data. Okay. For byte byte array, for files. Well, if you want to uh, filter a, a stream, right? You can use this. Uh, uh, filter input stream to filter whatever you want to filter. You can filter from uh, your input stream and uh, read whatever the things that are needed. Okay, and uh, for uh, if you want to read from an object, object itself. Say for example, you have serialized. Serialization is nothing but storing the state of a particular object in uh, a file. Okay, so storing the state of a particular object in a file. That is nothing but your uh, fields. You have your instance variables, right? The instance variables. Those uh, whatever the values of a particular object of those instance variables, you want to capture that in a file. This is not your storing it in a database or not, or this database or uh, not. It is your file. You are storing this, this state in a file. Okay, normal uh, file system file. Okay, in such cases, you can use this object uh, input stream. Data input stream is like uh, that is what I just uh, mentioned, right? Any raw data. Okay. So buffered input stream, we use this buffered input stream by passing any of these input stream because this will give you performance. Okay, so you buffer all the things and then read uh, uh, at a time and store it in a destination. So some number of things, okay. So it depends on your uh, uh, situation, I mean your requirement actually. 
okay pipe input streams we can connect n number of uh, uh, streams together okay uh, say for example this is one stream this is second stream this is third stream so you want to connect say for example uh, you want to connect the output of this one to input of uh, this second stream and then this is output of second stream to input of uh, first stream okay that is what is called as your pipe stream is nothing but uh, piping in your uh, unix right similar to that one so based on your requirement all these things are uh, all these concrete classes are developed out of this particular uh, abstract classes okay it depends most probably what we will be using is byte array uh, file input stream buffer input stream data input stream so there may be situations where you, you might be using pipe input stream or filtered input stream as well but uh, most of the places we will use these things only that is buffer data byte array and uh, file input streams okay okay yeah thank you yeah sure good so that's what we were discussing about uh, the stream so there are uh, three methods which are defined in your abstract class so which are defined in your abstract class that is your input stream so int available so this is always always these things are written type of a method okay this is the method name these are the method name okay so int available this gives the number of bytes for example you connect to a file okay you establish a stream to a particular file uh, if you call this int available for the first time after uh, establishing connection or uh, establishing a stream to that particular source file it will give all the number of bytes num total number of bytes uh, available for reading okay say for example you have uh, 10k of uh, a file that will return 10k bytes okay so once you open a stream it is uh, mandatory to close it in the sense you have to close it otherwise uh, uh, memory will be wasted okay till the garbage collection uh, collects uh, these uh, unused objects uh, that memory will be used and uh, it will be a waste okay so you have to close it once you open it better to close it okay once everything is done all the operations are done then you can close it okay uh, some of the uh, input streams provide support for mark and uh, you can check for that particular stream whether mark is supported okay there are something called as mark and reset and the reset okay say for example you are reading from a stream okay say for example one two Three, four, five, five bytes are there. Okay, you are reading from here, and you want after uh, three bytes, you are, you want to, at this particular point, you want to put a mark. Okay, so let's see uh, what is there in this particular uh, byte. Okay, and then you can put a mark here. Before reaching this, this particular mark will be valid till you reach from here. Uh, say for example, you are reading one second byte and third byte. Okay, this mark will be valid. till you read this three byte okay or before if you are uh, reading second byte and if you want to reset you can go back to your uh, previous uh, state and then come back and then once you move from from this particular uh, this one uh, that is marked that that will become invalid okay so which are the input stream if you want to check whether that mark is supported mark and reset is supported you can you check this one and use mark to mark number of bytes okay after the number of bytes from current point okay so from current point it will place a mark and then uh, and it is valid until the number of bytes are read so what it says is uh, my understanding was wrong so you, uh, you are reading from here it place a mark here okay and then it will uh, this mark will be valid until say for example i have mentioned 3 bytes here okay this will be valid until you read 3 bytes 1 2 3 bytes okay so after two bytes if you decide to reset back or if you want to come back to your first byte there is a method called reset so if you invoke that method it will come back to this point okay once you cross this number of bytes that is three bytes 1 2 3 this mark will become invalid okay fourth for fourth byte this mark will be invalid and we should try to uh, run uh, if you try to call reset method that will throw io exception okay that is what is the meaning of uh, mark and uh, mark supported okay so read means it will read the uh, data from your uh, source source as integer 
okay so once the file say for example you are reading from a file uh, for all the all the number of uh, bytes it will uh, i mean whatever the bytes you are reading it will uh, return the integer representation of that particular byte and once it reaches the end of file it will give it will return minus 1 okay it will return minus 1 so you can check for uh, the end of file by uh, checking for minus 1 okay and here you can specify the buffer okay what it the read does is it reads from input buffer dot length number of bytes and returns the total number of bytes read okay this condition remains the same minus 1 for end of file okay what is the advantage you are reading in this buffer and uh, once you re read from this buffer put it like write uh, write to a destination and then again read uh, so many bytes and then read this will improve your performance okay because you are reading and writing uh, a bulk of data not byte by byte okay so along with that we have uh, a read this is one more variant of your uh, read it reads into a buffer uh, say for example you have an array byte array and 0 1 2 3 and 4 okay so if you want to uh, read data from index second you can specify that it has the offset and the number of bytes so for example you want to read uh, two bytes three bytes okay three bytes from three bytes from uh, second index okay one two three uh, say for example four okay so you want to read java and put it in this okay this will be uh, from null okay this will be java J A V A. okay it will if you specify that offset it will read from that particular offset and how many number of bytes you have specified here number of bytes okay as i mentioned reset will work with your uh, mark function okay mark is current point it will place a mark and you can come back to it before you read number of bytes that you specified while marking it okay and then skip uh, to skip a certain number of uh, bytes say for example you are you want to read uh, java okay you want to skip first two bytes okay so then you can specify two bytes and then read so it will give you va okay so like that okay so these are the uh, basic methods that are there that are available for your uh, input string okay available close mark mark supported uh, remember mark mark supported and uh, reset okay mark support mark and reset are the ones which uh, which are used uh, in conjunction so if you want to check whether a particular uh, stream uh, implements uh, these two methods you can check it with this mark supported method it returns uh, true for any input stream which implements uh, mark and uh, reset and false for others okay reading we have three three things uh, just read will give you individual bytes uh, and you can put in a particular buffer or uh, based on uh, you can specify the offset and read from that offset read into uh, the array by byte array from that offset okay skip and reset so we have understood that and let's move on to output stream so as you know output stream is to write data to a destination write data to a destination okay this is an all, uh, all question is also an abstract class implements closable and flushable in interface okay flushable closable we have to close it flushable means so you have uh, uh, you it, it what is called as it uh, finalizes your uh, uh, write status okay output stream state finalizes output stream state because it means like uh, everything will be clear the stream itself will be clear okay sometimes what happens you have a stream okay you have you have read something okay uh, you have read all these things but some things are uh, left out here okay that something happens and the io exception happens and the state will be invalid right in such scenarios so uh, it is always uh, advised to uh, use flush flushable okay flushable is an interface which uh, defines flush method okay so can use it so as your input stream throws io exception for error condition okay 
So methods, the method, uh, methods in abstract class uh, output strings are as we below. Close, closes, flush, it uh, finalizes the output state. And uh, so that uh, if you are using any buffers, they are cleared, okay. So in, a, in no data will be like uh, held in uh, buffers. So right, similar to this, there are three variants. Byte, whatever the byte you want to write it to a destination. What are the buffer or the data in your buffer, right? Byte array that you want to write it to your destination. Byte array from where you have to read the offset of the index from where, from where you want to read, okay? Up to number of bytes, okay? So one of the concrete class that uh, we will discuss uh, here is uh, file input stream and file output stream. So it uh, extends from uh, respectively, like uh, as I mentioned. Okay, file input stream and file output stream. Let us quickly see an example. Okay, I don't have the program. Just mention uh, throws exception. So I have to manually import this, okay, and then available. Okay, it's not available, okay. So I can print available.
so whenever we see and whenever it is not able to read anything file input string test okay so throw the exception file not found exception that is also not found So it read all these things, okay? Uh, okay, so it is not printing all these things. Number of bytes, how much it is showing? 569 bytes. So it read all these things. Not as printing. Till the end of all, it is printing. Okay. So this is how you use uh, input string. Okay. So we will uh, wind up uh, the session uh, at this point. Tomorrow I have a meeting to attend now. So we will wind up this uh, call as a, uh, now itself. Okay. Uh, thanks for attending. Uh, tomorrow we will see file output stream and some other input stream and output streams, and then uh, we will uh, see readers and writers. Okay readers and writers okay uh, so we'll discuss about if you have any questions please send out an email to intuition at java training dot com okay thanks everyone thanks a lot bye okay bye, -bye.